process of building an MVP is very particular. The reason why is because if you leave one stone left unturned, it can spell a nightmare in logistics during programming and worse, in your wallet. How it works is simply enough, you're going to design the entire product from start to finish before you even touch a line of code. Now, we already went through what the design process looks like before in our non-functional prototype video, which you can watch here or here, wherever we put the link. However, the difference between a non-functioning prototype and an MVP is a complete 180 difference. When you're building MVP, you're going to go into programming. You already went through the pros and cons of why you might want to go and build an NFP versus an MVP. So let's assume you already made the decision, I need this to function, I need to be in the market. Well, the next step is programming. Now, if you're building a web app, programming is broken into two phases, front-end programming and back-end programming. Front-end is what renders on a web browser. If you've ever gone on a website or a web app before, that is what actually makes aesthetics appear and load and work. The back-end happens after that. That's what actually adds the logic, what makes the brain of your app function, and it all connects together that way. Now, if you're going mobile app, both the front-end and back-end happen simultaneously. Because with mobile app development, backend actually dictates what the aesthetic of the app looks like too. So there's no degree of separation here. When it's all said and done, it's all the same thing. It's creating the app so that it will actually function on whatever device that you're using. Unlike a non-functional prototype, when you're building an MVP, it is going to function. A product that real users will be able to access going to your .com URL or searching for you on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store and can download it and use it. And if you're making it to make you money, we'll be able to actually generate real transactions, have the ability for you to handle credit cards, debit cards, bank transactions, however you set it up. If you're trying to get real users that are real accounts, they're there forever for you to market, for you to be able to pay attention to, to collect data for. And that's a big piece. You're able to now collect data. You're gonna be able to monitor user trends, what they're doing, all the things that were dictated during the planning phases of the MVP come to fruition. But there is inherent risk early on that for a lot of first time technical entrepreneurs, they've never realized. A great example is quality assurance, QA. This is where you work out all the kinks, all the bugs, all the errors that the product might be doing before you go up into market. You might have experienced a bug before yourself on major products, Google and Facebook and everything in between. Perhaps the coding needs to be flushed out, or there's some incompatibility, or during device testing, certain devices and cooperating right. But your goal is to eliminate as many as possible, especially the noticeable ones before you go live. This is where you test on a bunch of different devices, a bunch of different operating systems, where you test under different factors, because your goal is to crush them before your users witness them, because it's so hard to change that impression. And your goal is to make it the best one possible, usually between 10 to 20 percent of the project timeline is spent just in testing or working out kinks and making sure it comes to life because you only have one shot to make a great first impression and any quality development firm any quality technical team is going to ensure that that first impression is knocked out of the park